2. Let's read a few verses here. We'll start with the first verse. And we're going to read down through to verse number 10. <clears throat> Wherefore, laying aside all malice and guile and hypocrisy and envying and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the sincere, sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby, if so by be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a lively stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. That's talking about Jesus. Ye also are lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scriptures, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him should not be confounded. And to you therefore which believe at, he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallow, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye, everybody say, but ye, are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him. That ought to be capitalized. The praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into this one marvelous light, which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Amen. Tonight I want to preach on a subject, and it's a question, and that is, is anybody real? Is anybody real? And good. I mean, the whole world thinks they're real, but I want to know if you're real and good. Not real good, but real and good. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you tonight for your touch. We thank you, Lord, for every heart and life that's here. We ask the anointing of the Holy Ghost to be upon the Word of God as we preach in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. A portrait is a likeness. And a likeness is something that maybe somebody had put on canvas or taken a picture of. And uh, it is a representation. The Mona Lisa. How many have ever seen the picture of the Mona Lisa? It's a very expensive painting somewhere in the world. The original is. There's been a lot of copies. Come to find out the Mona Lisa is a picture of a prostitute in the, in the 13th century or somewhere back in there. That is her portrait. And then there's the movies. The movies. The movies came along somewhere in the last century and uh, became very interesting and very intriguing. People would be interested in a moving picture and then that began to focus people in the picture. Those people then began to represent something, an idea, whatever, and it just was mesmerizing to uh, my one son, Scott, and at 16 he wanted to be in the movies. And uh, somebody from Hollywood was scouting around and caught his eye and they caught, uh, they started talking. And then on the front steps of the church here, a gang uh, slashed his face open with uh, 53 stitches and there went the movies. All things work together for the good and uh, your life is going to mean a whole lot more to God and the kingdom of God than the movies. Anyway, uh, 
movies started out, I guess, fairly innocent. There were movies, and I don't know all of them, uh, because we didn't have a television to see all of that back in the day. But I heard of a, a, a story, and probably saw it a time or two, called Father Knows Best. And uh, how many have ever heard of that? Yeah. All right, there's a few older people that have heard about Father Knows Best. And then we've heard about the Little House on the Prairie, which uh, was back there in the 70s, which was a refreshing look back uh, to a different time. And it's back when people wanted to look back to a refreshing time of a Little House on the Prairie. Now they don't really care about it, and it lost its luster and excitement in people's minds. And then there's the Wizard of Oz, which was going to showcase courage and heart and brain. And uh, the story uh, in the movies still, amazingly enough, showcases good versus evil. Good versus evil. Not to mention the fact that a whole lot of evil things are portrayed and pictured as being okay. But the theme is still there, good versus evil. And the question is, is anybody real? Is anybody real? The people in the movies, I would venture to say that among that set, there really wasn't anybody real. Back in the 20s and the 30s and the 40s and the 50s, each decade came along with, with a videotape or a audio tape of the bloopers of those people. And uh, they would be in the middle of their lines and make a mistake and they would end up cussing. And uh, it was kind of disappointing to me to hear all the bloopers of people that you thought were really nice people portraying somebody really upstanding in society. But when they made a mistake, they cussed. And when they got finished, they lit up a cigarette and went out for a beer and probably lived an immoral life even back then. And nowadays, the whole set has turned into uh, something absolutely terrible. And probably it'd be safe to say that nobody there was real. Nobody there was real and good. And then there's the amazingness of man that I want to talk about here for a moment because man is pretty amazing. Man is God's creation and man is able to do things mentally that just boggle your mind. I saw one time a man that was so sharp in math that no matter what kind of a problem you spit at him, he could answer it. He went to a college, some of you probably saw this, and he went to a college class of math and, and they all had their computers and their calculators and uh, they would spit out a, a, a math question to him and he could answer multiple, multiple multiple numbers of answers uh, in split seconds while they were still trying to figure it all out on their computer. And these were math majors. The mind is amazing. And uh, God made the mind. I'm not sure how he does that. I can do some math problems fairly quick, but uh, not that. And then physically, on YouTube sometimes, now you're going to see all kinds of things happen. I'm not sure that you could afford to believe it anymore, since they can doctor stuff up and make it look real, and it's not real. But it is amazing what man can do physically, and sometimes in games, and sometimes in, in different uh, showcases of what they do, they do amazing feats physically. And then in their imagination, Genesis 11, 6 says that they would be able to do whatever they imagined in their quest in life, if they would unite themselves together in unity, and in many cases they have done all of that, and man is absolutely amazing. But there's one thing that man can't hardly buy of another man, and that is to be real and good. People have a hard time believing that anybody is really good. I mean really good. The real article, what you see is what you get. That's what they are no matter where they are or what's going on. And the world can't believe that. 
And in fact, they're looking at that many times, but they don't really know what they're looking at. But I want to preach tonight about the fact that there are people in this world who are real. And they are good. And it can't happen by man's ability because it's going to take the power of God to do that. But the question tonight, is anybody real and good? And of course, it's a portrait. Is it possible for somebody to put on a portrait of something that they're representing and uh, poising themselves to be and to really be the real article? Is that possible? I know sometimes we look around even in church and we know that, that there are people in church that are not really real. And we're pretty perceptive of each other and we can sort of tell. And we know that everybody's human and we know that it's going to take the blood of Jesus Christ and the act of Calvary to forgive us and give us grace but is it possible for there to be somebody that is absolutely real and they're good that's the question I want to pose to you tonight and of course I'll give you the answer right now and that is by the power of the Holy Ghost the answer is yes Simon Peter before <coughs> before he was converted denied the Lord and uh, he was with him he he was there when they tried to arrest the Lord or when they did arrest him and and uh, he acted as if he was going to defend the Lord but then it just wasn't very long until till he was denying that he even knew him and it's a pretty amazing thing that, <clears throat> that sometimes we claim to be faithful and loyal and then all of a sudden turn around and, and say, I, I, don't, I don't know him. A waitress in a restaurant asked him, do you, do you know Jesus? You sound like one of those guys. You sound like him. You, you, I think I saw you with him. And, and, and cussing always goes along with trying to boister your words when there's really not truth in it. So he had to curse and then claimed that he didn't know the Lord at all when the truth of the matter was he walked with the Lord for three and a half years. He was one of the disciples that followed the Lord and he was not necessarily a bad guy but at this point he was denying the Lord I guess because of fear. I mean I wouldn't criticize him too much. He might do the same thing in those circumstances but Peter denied the Lord and then the Lord filled him with the Holy Ghost and gave him a destiny and handed him some keys and he was able to step up on the day of Pentecost and say you men, of brother, men and brethren you are, you are looking at the fulfillment of the scriptures and Joel and Isaiah and now you have crucified that chief cornerstone and they said what should we do and he had the answer repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and, and now there's going to be a miraculous ability in mankind to be something that nobody else could be impossible to be real and good at the same time right. but by the power of the Holy Ghost it is possible right. it's very possible tonight that you're looking at people in church who are real and good right. I mean I'm talking about when you're not looking, they're good. Their mind is good. Their life is good. Their body is good. They're serving God. And the world has a hard time ever believing that. They might believe everything they see on the internet or on TV. They might believe everything they hear from the media. But they, they have a hard time believing that somebody could be real and good. But I'm telling you tonight, it's very possible. And so... Paul before was Saul of Tarsus and he was he was an evil man that that killed Christians and influenced and, and was against the kingdom of God but then but then the Lord knocked him down and changed his direction and he became the apostle Paul and he turned into somebody that was real and good I'm talking tonight about a portrait of something that's real and good. You're not sure what you're looking at when you look at somebody's picture. You're looking at the Mona Lisa, but you're not really sure what you're looking at. And of course, when we finally found out who she was and, and what it was all about, it, it's kind of disappointing. A lot of times that's how it is in life. You look at somebody, perhaps an official, a president or somebody, and, and you think they're wonderful until you get up close and you find out they're 
they're not anything like what I thought or how it was portrayed. Somebody painted a picture, but it's not a real picture. It's not reality at all. The world's caught up in, in things being real, but they're not caught up in things being good. So nowadays, for things to be real, they got to call it life. And that's life. And so whatever happens and it's not so good, they just say, well, that's life. Or whatever happens and, and now they want to call it reality. This is reality. Well, reality is, is that we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity and we need God. Reality is that we have a fallen nature. But because Jesus went to Calvary and paid the price, we can be real and we can be good. We can be good. You could put your trust in somebody and, and they filled with the Holy Ghost could be somebody that you could look at, <coughs> admire, lift up, and believe. And I'm preaching tonight that there's people right here in this building who are real <coughs> and good. It's more amazing than any physical feat that you could see on the internet of uh, people <coughs> throwing a basketball, you know, 100 yards away and making it in the net. <laughs> <laughs> things bouncing around I don't know for sure all of that or if I even believe it but there's some pretty amazing things the guy kicks the ball it bounces over here goes over there ends up in the basket I'm thinking yeah I'm not sure I'd have to be there to see that or either that or that's his 42 thousandths time to do it and it was just luck I'm just telling you tonight you can't really believe everything you see but in the kingdom of God you're liable to run across people who are real and good too because God's able to do that. That's the plan of God is that we would be a showcase of the glory of God, a portrait of Jesus Christ. And so Saul of Tarsus ended up the, the Apostle Paul and it was a pretty amazing thing. And then the world has always wanted to see God. And Philip said to Jesus, show us the Father and we will be happy it sufficeth us and Jesus said have I been so long time with you and thou hast not known me Philip if you've seen me you've seen the father Amen. and I say unto you tonight that you're looking at the body of Jesus Christ sitting in church right here you're looking at people that don't just smoke and drink and do drugs and all the other stuff, but they're living a holy life by the power of the Holy Ghost. If you don't believe what I'm telling you tonight, I'm telling you that you're missing the whole plan of God because God intends for people to live a holy life. They're going to be real and they're going to be good too. Yes. Now that's a miracle. That's more amazing than any physical feat. That's more amazing than any mental, mental feat. That's more amazing than any imagination that man has ever come up with for humanity to come up with an ability in the presence and the grace of God to be real and good. Everybody say and good. So whose portrait are you projecting? When people look at you, what is it that they're going to see? Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove whether that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God said he's going to give you his spirit and you're going to be a portrait of Jesus Christ. We sing the song to be like Jesus and I'm saying tonight that it's very possible that with the power of the Holy Ghost and the blood of Jesus that you could be real and good in life not just for a moment not just when you're in church that's the big deal that's going on in the world today the world has lost confidence in the church because the church was something in the building but something else out there I'm telling you that there are people who live for God and serve God and they are real and they are good 24-7 365 and a quarter alright you can't leave the quarter out you could lose your whole soul in a six hour period and so I'm just saying there's people who are real and good too 
and the world wants to see Jesus. Amen. Show us the Father and we'll be happy. And Jesus said, you're looking at him. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The world is telling us, show us, show us God, show us something. And I'm saying tonight, if you've seen these people right here, you are looking at people who are real and good. Now, you might catch them in a flaw, but we have the blood of Jesus Christ to cover that. Amen. And I'm just saying people that are in church and faithfully serving God are real and good. Yeah. Is it possible for anybody to be real and good? Yeah, the whole world is being real and it's a mess. It's a whole bunch of sin. It's sickness. It's, it's deplorable. But yes, people can be real and be good. You are a portrait of what the Lord wants to show the world. The scripture that we read says you are a showcase of the glory of God. You're to show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness. So what I'm doing tonight as a pastor called to perfect the portrait. We have a painting in front of us and you are a portrait of Jesus Christ and we are in the process of perfecting the por portrait. Years ago, my boss and I had a conversation and, and uh, he was telling me I was already a pastor and uh, he was telling me there's no way the guys in your church don't stop off at the bar, spend their paycheck and, and get drunk and do other stuff there and then come home. And I, and I was telling him, you know, the guys in my church, as far as I know, I'm not God. There's no use having to speak in absolutes. But I said, as far as I know, the guys in my church are godly. They live a holy life. They're not stopping off at the bar. They all come home and hand their paycheck to their wife. Well, I'm not sure it went that far, but <clears throat> anyway, I believe there are some good people that serve God and they're real. Give the Lord a hand clap for that right now. So you are a portrait, you're, you're projecting something and I want to talk a minute about what is being projected. If you gossip, if you gossip and tear down the church and the things of God, you are a portrait not for God, you're not real. If you raise your hands and sing in church and tear down the kingdom of God some place in some other setting when it is convenient or appropriate, I'm just saying that's not a good portrait. There needs to be a portrait of, of loyalty and faithfulness and love. That is what the world needs to see. They need to see what real love is. There should be no bigotry in the church. And if that word's too big for you, let me just explain it to you. It's when you think you're better than somebody else because of something that you or them have nothing to do with. Culturally or racially or whatever, there's no such thing in the kingdom of God as people having an attitude that is ungodly. But I know people that love everybody. I know people that, that want everybody to be saved. I know people that will go out of their way, spend their time and effort and energy to pick up the man that's, that's beaten on the side of the road, take him to the end, pay. I know there are good Samaritans in the kingdom of God. And the story is told by Jesus who, who is breaking racial barriers because it was the Gentiles and the Jews and the Samaritans were a mix and everybody looked down. The, the Gentiles looked down at the Samaritans and the Jews looked down at the Samaritans and, and the Lord's telling the story and he said the priest and the Levite, they were too busy but this Samaritan had time. And Jesus is telling the story to break down barriers because it's possible for somebody to not have a title and everybody disdains them, but they are real and they're good too. They are God's portrait in the world. They said that, and the Bible says that in Isaiah 53, that Jesus was not good looking. 
The movies are always trying to pick up somebody to portray something. And then when you find out what they really are and who they really are, you just as soon never see them. You're disappointed. Many of them end up taking their life. They end up ruining their life. And, and, and lately I see on Facebook or somewhere they talk about this movie star. This is the before and the after. Well, I want to tell you that the after when you get in the kingdom of God is going to look way better than the before. The Lord's going to take you and change you into something real and good too. So if you're a portrait of disrespect, it's going to be a problem to represent Jesus Christ. And the Lord, I want, I want to be a testimony for the Lord wherever I go. I, I, don't, I don't want to be unkind at any time, anywhere. I don't want to be unkind to the dog. I don't want to be a, unkind to anybody who in a different station of life you might think is, is lower. I want, to, I want to be Jesus Christ in every setting. God, help me to do that. Amen. And I'm just saying tonight, make room in your mind for the fact that God has people in this world who are real and good. Amen. They're living a holy life. And so... What are you portraying? What are you when nobody's looking? The question is, is if we're going to be real and we're going to be good, it's not something we put on as a personality to present to the world whenever we want to put our best foot forward. It's what we really are when nobody's looking. It's what's going through your mind when, when nobody hears or sees the thoughts, but it's who you are. If you're cynical, if you're critical, if, if you got all kinds of things going through your mind, but then you bust a smile out and everybody thinks you're wonderful and you have enough wisdom to keep your mouth shut and not put it all out there, it's still who you are. You're not being real. And if it's not good in there, I'm saying you don't have to be real publicly. You are who you are. You can't help it. So somehow let the Holy Ghost get a hold of you and make you real. When Jesus forgives you and you get the identity of what the Lord has for you to have, then you can lift up your head. It's a real smile. It's a real handshake. It's a real love. It's a real heartfelt feeling. It's not put on. It's not hypocritical. It's somebody that's good and real. And I'm saying tonight that's very possible. But it's going to be when it's just you and yourself in session considering what you're thinking, what you're going to do, what you are. And, and God's looking. But really it's what you are. Character is what you really are. And the operation of the church, the operation of preaching of the word of God, the operation of the presence of God and the Holy Ghost working in your life is to work on who you are when nobody's looking. And if God can be happy with you, who you are when nobody's looking, then you are real and good too. So I want to make a room in your mind for the possibility. And that's what the world is all about. And that's what even people in the church are all about. Is they're trying to figure out some flaw in somebody to find out, you know. Because it's just hard to believe. Right. I mean, I see guys do somersaults on bikes, motorcycles, uh, ski doos out in the water and... And uh, the ones you ride in the snow. Yeah, snowboards and skis and snowmobiles. And I'm thinking, man, that's just unbelievable. Well, it's unbelievable to the world for somebody to be real and good. They just have a hard time believing it. They're sure that there's evil somewhere in everybody. And I'm telling you tonight, our evil is under the blood and we're living for God when nobody's looking. 
when we're laying in bed we put our head on the pillow with peace in our heart and that's why I wanted to sing that song tonight I know the peace speaker and I know him by name and when he steps up on the bow of my boat and, and my heart is having a rocky day the Lord can p speak peace inside of my soul and I can be real and good too real is anybody real if we find out what you really are, are we going to be thrilled and happy and amazed or are we going to be sorry and disappointed and sad? I want to be real. Yeah. I can't do it on my own. I'm no different than all the rest of the world, but by the grace of God. See, the Bible said that, that the ministry and the church is for the perfecting. So we are not necessarily perfect yet, but we are well on our way to living a holy life and walking with God. Are you having a hard time buying that for your life? There's a whole lot of things going on in the world that could make you really a fake person in private because inside of everybody's pocket is a connection to all the garbage of the world. But, you know, when you put garbage in, you get garbage out. And so if you're putting garbage in and you're trying to make the outward look okay, you're not real. You're not real. God needs to see you make decisions in private that nobody else knows. You, do, you look at that introduction picture and you say, I'm not going to click on that because I don't need that in my heart and my mind. Okay? There's nobody standing beside you patting you on the back and saying, oh, that was really a good decision. I mean, God is there. But if you're real, if you're real and you're good too, you do that. Hello? Amen. You do that. You do that. You make decisions when nobody's looking. Nobody's looking at how much you make and how much you give and on the proportions of all of that except you and God. And we're not going to get into the business of trying to track all that down for people. It's just that you could be real. There are people in this world that give to God sacrificially. There are people in this church who give to God and, and pray and seek the Lord and, and have, have a heart that's pure before God. In private, when nobody's looking, their heart is right with God. I'm not going to get into trying to make the judgment of whoever. I'm just telling you, you got to make room in your mind for you to understand that God can make you holy in your heart. To where when nobody's looking, you're not under any obligation. You're not trying to perform to anybody. But you and God have an awesome relationship. And you're real. Amen. And good. <laughs> God's good. <clears throat> God's good. And for the people who are real and good, they are the most tolerant people of people who are not real. Do you know who's intolerant of people who are not real? People who are hypocrites. People who are basically saying, I have a good looking front and never mind what it really looks like inside and, and underneath. But you have a lousy look in front. You're not a very good hypocrite. That's what they're saying. Because Jesus was real and good. And he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. That's pretty amazing. For the people that are real and good, you sort of get a glimpse of it because they're not the critics. They're not the ones that's going to tear down the church. They're the ones that when they see a problem or a fault, they're going to seek the Lord in prayer. They may never talk to anybody about it, but they talk to the Lord and that makes them real and good too. God, give us grace to be real and good because the world is watching and we're showing, for, we're showing forth a portrait of the Lord. We're showing forth a portrait of something that's really good and really cares and really loyal and really faithful. We need to showcase giving. 
There's giving online now, so people don't really even need to walk up here. But like Brother Pilate said when he first introduced to us, bringing it up to the front, go up there whether you're putting something in or not. Because it's a statement to everybody in the church that you want to give to God. If you don't have anything to give, that's fine. But if you have something to give, give it. But God knows what it's all about. And he told about the little lady that gave the two mites. And he's paying attention. And so we can't make a judgment. We're not going to sit here and say, well, you didn't come or you did come or whatever. I'm just saying between you and God, you be real and good too. And let God in private see what you're doing. The Bible said whatever's done in private is going to be shouted on the housetop. I wouldn't mind if people would say that's a wonderful man. He serves God. He's faithful and loyal. That's what I would like to hear from the housetop. But I need to be good in private. I need to be good when nobody's watching, when I'm not answering to anybody, but in my heart, I want to live a holy life. I believe that there are people that are good and holy and real. 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 I want to be real. Amen. Some people talk about plastic people. Can't stand plastic people. Can't stand people who are fake. Well, how do you know for sure who's what? How do you know for sure that the person you're looking at that looks really real is not all that real? How do you know? You don't. Really, you just got to pay attention to your own business and your own life and do your best to be real and good too. I mean, when a man gets done repenting at the altar and asking God to forgive me, give him, and then, then it's all put under the blood, and he gets up, he is, he is real and good. <laughs> Think about it. He is real and good. And if you learn to walk that way, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. We are going to live this every day of our life. Let's give the Lord a hand clap right now. So we're a portrait. We're a portrait, and when people are looking at the portrait, what are they looking at? This is better than just a painted picture. This is a moving picture. And this is a live moving picture. And this is even better than the movies because they're just playing a part. And it's very possible that you are looking at something that is absolutely miraculous. You're looking at somebody living their life. And they're real. They're not just playing a part. They're not just quoting a script. They're not somebody that's going to do something totally different when they're not on camera. You are looking at a life portraying Jesus Christ wherever they go. You probably, if you're going to be real and good, you're never going to say a cuss word. Amen. Brother Elms and I were talking to a couple of guys the other day and Brother Elms was talking about how that he never heard a cuss word in his house since the whole time growing up. And the guys, you know, automatically started doing what people do when they get convicted. One guy said, well, I sure couldn't say that. My kids couldn't say that. And, and then he started saying, God bless their heart. I can't believe that anybody could, could, could be that good. And Brother Elm said, I, I never heard my parents cuss one time. And he went on and on to talk about the goodness of the home and the goodness of God and the goodness of the church. And, and they're just, you know, and finally the guy says, could I shake your hand? <laughs> I like to shake your hand. It's, it's like I couldn't believe that there's somebody in the world that is real and good too. So then you have the game that we quit playing because it teaches people to lie. What game is that? Mafia. I'm going to explain it to you, but it's just to make a point in the message. <clears throat> but mafia 
is a game that you play and there's different categories in the game. There's townspeople. Those are just regular people. Then there's people that are mafia and they're bad. And then there's, there's somebody in the town called the governor. And every night when everybody has to close their eyes, they have to try to figure out in the group, in the game, who is the mafia and who is the townspeople. And every night somebody is going to get killed. And what happens is the mafia in the room, whoever they are, it's going to be two or three people, they all get to open their eyes and they get to pick somebody that they want to knock out. So they all know that they're on the evil team, but nobody else knows that they're on the evil team. And when you walk, open your eyes, all these people are trying to convince people that, you know, I'm on the, I'm on the town side. And so you don't know if you're talking to the governor that actually, you know, gets to know some things. Like the governor gets to know some of who the mafia is, but he can't tell. And so the game goes on and you're literally polishing how good you can lie. But you might be telling the truth. You might be saying, I'm not the mafia. And, and of course, the mafia is going to try to get you nominated to be mafia so that you can get killed and get knocked out. And whoever's got the most left is the winner. I mean, this is like real life. The devil's always trying to make you look like you're bad. That's right. That's his whole case. And he goes before the Lord as an accuser. And so the question is tonight is when you look at people here, who are you looking at? Are you looking at the mafia or are you looking at the townspeople? Are you looking at the church, the people of God? Who are you looking at? And all I can say is, you know what? We need to treat everybody like they're the people of God. Let them worry about if they're not. But I'm not going to mistreat you just because I don't think you're right. When you might be the governor, you might be the very one that is making a difference. I mean, they make movies on this kind of stuff. Everybody thought that was the bad guy, and it turns out he was the good guy. He was the best guy. I'm just saying tonight, we're sitting in church and there's people sitting here and there's people who are real and good too. They're godly. They're saints of God. Their name is going to be written in the Lamb's book of life. God's got destiny and plans for them. And if you only knew who you were sitting by and what they're going to do in eternity, you would be standing at attention. You would be saluting them. You would be amazed to be in their presence. And they might be a child today. So it brings out of us the height of character to be real. And the best way to be real is to just be real all the time. And I've said this over and over and I say it, it's a powerful statement. Jesus said, the world has nothing in me. And what he meant by that is you can't get it out of him if it's not in him. So they beat him. They hung him on the cross. They stuck him with a sword. They did all kinds of terrible things. They could not get one cuss word out of him. They couldn't get a bad attitude out of him. Because it wasn't in there. Right. It wasn't like he sat in private and had animosity in his heart against people. And then all of a sudden it slipped out when something happened. No, it wasn't in there. We need to be real and good in private so that we are real and good in public. And I'm telling you, by the grace of God, it is very, very possible that you're looking at people who have an awesome destiny in eternity. That God knows who they are today and he's working in their life. And you're rubbing shoulders with them. I'm not claiming to be one of them. I don't know for sure who it is or all about it. All I'm saying is, is anybody real? And good too. The only person you can really answer that for is yourself. I want to be real. 
and good. I don't want to just use the excuse of, oh, I'm just real, so I have a temper and I can't help it. I'm just real. This is the way I come. You just got to accept me for what I am. That's just a lame excuse of not being responsible for letting God change you. We need to be real, but we need to be good, too. Let's stand. By the time Peter really got a glimpse of who he was and what he had done, he was sad. When he finally got to see reality, he saw what the real real was. The Lord told him, when the rooster crows, you're going to remember that I told you you were going to deny me. And Peter was sad when he heard the rooster and realized, you know what? <clears throat> Jesus was right. I am not who I claim to be. I am not real. But what was the difference between him and Judas? Because Judas was not real either. Peter wasn't any more real than Judas. Peter denied the Lord. Judas denied the Lord. What's the difference in the two? One had faith that God could make you into something real. And he said, Peter, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you're converted, I want you to strengthen the brother. And you are going to be an awesome testimony of what God could do. I don't know what you used to be. Some of you used to be pretty bad. Some of you came from a mighty, mighty long way. But God has turned you into something that's real and good too. And every day the devil comes before God and says... I want you to notice what brother so-and-so is doing or what sister so-and-so is doing. And the Lord's got the blood of Jesus Christ and it just drips on that sin and the Lord wash, washes it away. And Satan, the accuser of the brethren, has to leave upset and disappointed because it's true. When God gets finished perfecting us, we're going to be real good I want Jesus to step up on the bow of my boat and say peace be still what he did is he put the waves down he put the wind to stop he made the boat stop he changed the whole picture Jesus can do that and I want us to sing that song as we come down to the altar tonight because God wants you to be real and good